I think we would have let it go if, if the home inspector was thorough enough. How much water sits here? We're waiting for the big, big rain for it to come rushing into our basement. The longer we live here, the more stuff we find. The bedroom is directly above us here. They're talking about it's cold, it's freezing. If there was a lot of money to be put into the house, we probably would have opted out. Brian and Kelly, looking for their very first starter home. Kind of makes sense to live in the area of where they work. Everything's around here. Great for Hayden, their young little baby. They do the right thing. They bring in a home inspector. They walk around with him and ask him questions. What did he miss? I'm going to do a homes inspection, and I'll let you know. We were looking for a house with a backyard with enough bedrooms to um, cater to our growing family. One of the big things was that this house was a shorter commute than living outside of the city, which is what a lot of people do. We found this, it was just on the border of the city, close to, you know, public transit, and just seemed amazing to us. So it's a nice size house, and upstairs there's four bedrooms up there, which was surprising. I thought it was three originally. And the, the basement was already finished, and I was like, oh, this is great. I can, you know, our, our little son can play down here. I can uh, put my guitars and my music over there. And, you know, it's just the layout of it worked out really well. We were both at the inspection. We went around all the different parts of the house. The overall rating of the house was above average. So we figured, oh, the home inspector gave it the thumbs up. So let's buy this house. It is a hot day. Looking back, we see that there was a lot of stuff that was missed. As first-time home buyers, we didn't have big bags of money going in or anything like that, so we wouldn't have bought the house if we had known that there was all these extra things that we would have had to invest in. We would have looked for a fixer-upper in that case. Brian. Brian. I'm Mike. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Kelly? Hi, Mike. Nice Pleasure to meet you. you. Is it hot out? Oh, it is. Yes, it's this boiling. is what we call muggy. <laughs> yeah. It's only spring, and I don't mind this. Yeah. Look I at know. that. I see a leak right away. Yeah. Somebody's cocked underneath. Mm -hmm. You see your, you have a J-mold trim there, and then hold your siding coming right. vertical. That's why you're leaking right here. The water hits that vertical. It comes right down to the J-mold. There's nowhere for it to escape. It's actually yeah. bleeding back in. Oh, Has okay. it created any damage? It is wood. Is it moldable on top? The answer is yes. Has it molded? So should it be looked at? Well, it should be fixed, right? Yeah. I'm looking forward to Mike coming, of course, but I, I'm afraid of what he's going to find. I'm just, I don't want to know. <laughs> I noticed you have bedrooms over the garage. Let me guess, freezing cold in the winter. Yes. After living a, uh, a winter in this house, we noticed that the, the rooms above the garage were freezing. We call one of them the meat locker. It is just. I put plastic on the windows. We went out and we got a booster fan for our son's room. We closed the two doors in the front, put towels underneath, <laughs> just trying to contain the cold into that front part of the house. How many times do I got to take this down and insulate it properly because it's never been good enough? But not too often do I walk into a garage and there's panel on the wall that's not fire rated. If a fire happens in here, it spreads throughout the house, not to mention that it's not even sealed properly. It's one thing I love about taking it down and spray foaming it is that we stop that cold from getting into the house as well as we stop the gases from coming in it. Then we'll put up drywall and make it fire rated. Let's look at your grading. One of the things that we noticed that the home inspector didn't write anything about was our backyard, the leveling of our backyard. That sucks. Yeah, is, that where your, is that where your pond is? Yeah, well, in, yeah, in and around there, yeah. underway. <sighs> yeah, I almost tripped on that. Look at that, OK. <laughs> so this is obviously the lowest area right here. Yes. yes. The first major rainstorm that we got, we had an out outdoor pool, basically. It was, we look outside, and we were like, oh my goodness, we've got a pool out here. What is this? And uh, I went outside, and I checked it out, and I ended up shoveling it into the grass because I didn't know what to do with it. I, I was afraid that our house was going to flood. So a flat topography? No. It's not. No, we have bad grading is what we have. The inspector never touched on the fact that our ground was unlevel in the backyard. I don't see a lot of ventilation. Now, I'm looking at your soffit. I see one perforated soffit yeah. here. 
two soffits for your neighbors. And so this means we possibly have a lot of bad airflow in your attic. So did we see any mold or anything in your attic? No, he didn't mention mold. Did at you all. look in it? No. He, he did go up in the attic. He took his stepladder, uh, went up there, and uh, took his flashlight and looked around. He just poked his head in, though, didn't he? Yeah, and, and said that the installation was adequate for the, the age of the home and the size of the home. Let's go inside. OK. <laughs> Your home inspector didn't talk about this, did he? No. No. <laughs> OK. If we have a handrail on the wall, it's totally acceptable. If we have an open area right here, this now becomes a guardrail. And a guardrail must be 36 inches, must have pickets, so follow all the rules that, so some, when somebody finished this basement, they didn't do it properly, and this is incorrect and should have been put in the report. I read in the report, plumbing, no problems, in big words. Mm -hmm. This is a bathroom sink, yep. OK? It's, there's nothing that says you can't have it. Here's where the washing machine drops itself down into the drain. How interesting is that? What size is that pipe? Two inches, Two right? Inches. Okay. Goes down into a beautiful big trap that ties right back into an inch and a half. So we can always actually start with small and go to big, but you can't go from big to small. Because what that does is like the highway, it's, uh, we would look at it as a bottleneck. Oh, yeah. It starts to back up. Okay. Same thing here, and especially for a washing machine, you don't want that. As soon as the washing machine is dumping into that drain, and then you try and turn on that sink and have water drop down, it's going to have a competition of water. And that's going to back right back up. And I'm surprised you haven't flooded from this. So plumbing, no problems. We're not sure if we have a drain on the floor. Well, you have a drain somewhere. <laughs> you have a drain somewhere, but I see carpet everywhere. Where the hell's the drain, right? I'll see if I can find it. Pretend it never happened. <laughs> we'll go upstairs. At least it's louvered. I'm going to go through the rest of the house. I'll show you what I find. I'll fix it. There's a hole here, and something tells me this hole right here used to be an exhaust fan to a dryer, right? Because of the size of it. No one's going to drill a hole that big to put in PVC, right? Yeah. right? So that's, that's an electrical line. Mike's inspection went into the things that we never would have thought of that a home inspector should know, but ours obviously didn't. You know, it's funny. I look around these houses, and what do I see? Minor crack wasn't in the report easily. It's minor. Everyone panics when they see this and they think, oh my God, the house is falling down. It's not an issue. We'll just do some caulking and fill that area just to stop the water from getting in. The biggest problem that I see and probably the one that's responsible for the break, both on the left and right hand side, is the siding. Since we know that water's coming in and it's directly responsible for how the siding and J-mold is, Water's gotten into here. I'm going to pull this down. It's going to serve two purposes. One, a full inspection to see what's up there. Again, to show me where the water's coming from within the inspection. Two, I can now insulate that area because I am going to gut the garage and put in spray foam. So now this allows me to insulate here, which is also underneath the bedroom above. How far do I have to go? Will I have to take the siding down? I'll know when I pull this down. It's obvious the grade was brought up over the years, including the driveway that's old. And that's why I mean over the years, because if the driveway's been done and I can tell this is old, it's been brought up over the brick because for many years now, this being approximately 40 years old, that water on that side of the property is going to bleed in and hit the foundation. Now, this is supposed to be the vent for the uh, central vacuum. I don't think they need to run the muffler out of this side of the house. The problem that I'm seeing is that the vent is so low to the grade as snow gets in, what does it do? Snow gets in, it melts. Same as the dryer vent. The problem, once again, is that it's too low to grade. This hole right here used to be an exhaust fan to a dryer, which told me somebody changed downstairs. Wash and dry used to be here. That leads to so many other questions. Electrical, plumbing, what was closed in? How did they close it in? And it's not the best way to actually run wire across the wall and tie it into a second light. They have conduit. Why didn't they continue? And it's a shame, really.
This will be the area that possible water has penetrated. I'm going to take down some of the ceiling in here because it's going to show me some of the things they've done. More than likely, I'm going to concentrate on that corner. I used to have a laundry room at that area, sink, electrical. I want to know what they've done. Mr. Bennett. Yes, sir. What do you got for me? So the inspector comes in. Yeah. No problems in the garage. What does he say? I need a door closer on the yeah. door. Right? It's an interior door. Yeah, well, they tried to put a door closer on the door and it fell off, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, it's not biting it's in hollow. anything. It's a yeah. hollow core door. Yeah. Worse than that, here we have a 3 8 of an inch drywall, right? Because of the joints, because of everything else, yeah. it's not fire rated, it's not proper. We're going to have right. issues of uh, off gassing from the vehicles coming in the house. And guess what? Spray foam. Freezing cold on the second I'll floor. I'll bet. Simple things, I'd like to pull all this down. We're gonna have to find a place for it to go because I don't like it this way. I'd you rather sure? have shelves across. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. I'm, I'm underneath it. Okay. It's only helped by a few screws, dude. <laughs> okay. We would easily pop that down. Other issues I have is the central vac. We have a muffler line that runs through the house and up the other side of the house. Okay. Uh, I haven't gotten in the attic yet. The last time I was here, it was blistering hot. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. You don't even have to. You can just tell me. OK. Heads or tails? I'm going to go heads. You're going to go heads? Yeah. Oh! Tails! Oh! That means no, I win. Oh, I know. That's tails. Does that mean I'm going up alone? Yes. <laughs> Damn. OK, we have a rail. <laughs> That's At least we have a rail. Problem is, is we have an opening, and now we have guard issues, right? Right. So we see a beautiful little laundry room here. Mm-hmm. Totally wrong. Plumbing, electrical, interesting. Everything. And as a matter of fact, the home inspector didn't notice anything about plumbing. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, take a quick look, right? Oh, a two wow. inch line running into an inch and a half, and it's just it's a T. So here's what I want to do. We're gonna <sighs> probably open up this wall, yeah. do washer and dryer, okay, and change the door, and then we'll do a laundry tub. So try and fit this up. Okay. Deal with Martin. I've already talked to him about it. And maybe the maybe the washer's here and the dryer's here and the sink is there, gotcha. right? Still leaving a little bit of storage because there is a door to underneath yeah. the stairs, right? And maybe just moving the door. We'll address everything else. I do want to pull this down. Now, with the grade being high, it tells me over the years they had water coming in. Mm -hmm. Look at the corner. I know. I just saw that. Look at the mold. That's where there's a pond in the backyard. Right, right here. Now, also, the, the dryer used to duct out right here, right? right? So is water coming in there. Now, oh, we, if this is showing on this side, right. it's the other side I'm What's worried What's happening about. back there? OK. OK, mine are on the back side. Yeah. If the water gets in, it's definitely going somewhere, uh, which means it's going underneath the carpet, which is really a good thought to check that next. So now you know what? So far, this looks pretty good. I'm feeling good about that. Me too. They've drywalled over drywall, haven't they? Oh, there's foam on the wall. Now, it's styrofoam. It's not a rigid foam, but it's pretty damn good if you want to look at it as a point of insulation. It's better than bat insulation. Right. The reason that's hard to break is because of the foam behind it. It's not our foam. Nothing on the back side. That's what I wanted to see. Well, I don't think we have a problem on the outside walls. Let's pull the baseboard across okay. the back and take a look, just like I did here. Just as, if you can see the same thing when all the walls are fine. Right. Let's You're... go ahead and make the call to pull the ceiling. So pull the ceiling right around the room, cut the seams all the way around, and yep. stop at that wall, the laundry room wall, yep. straight across. OK. Mike thinks the laundry area has been moved from the back of the house to the front of the house. So we've already found a lot of plumbing and electrical issues. We want to drop this ceiling to make sure there's no hidden problems here. You know, it's funny. The home inspector didn't say anything about grade. We have a drop to the front. I really like the way it goes down. They picked up the side. You can see how they followed the brick all the way up. Actually, we do have a poured foundation. So they've come up over the brick. Now, by code, we need about six inches of foundation yeah. and then brick. Uh, obviously, I can't drop this down because I'm going to have a bathtub here, right? Especially the backyard area. You can see this one spot here. So this here just fills with water right to the wall. 
and it makes total sense. We got higher grade there, higher grade here. Here's the bottom of the bowl. The problem with this is someone has brought the whole corner of this property up and created the bowl. The fence all the way along it, they've built it up along the bottom. The tree's not helping. No, the tree's not helping. It's lifting the earth up there because I can see the rundown from this side. Good meaning people, they put in a garden, don't think of where the water's gonna go, and they capture it. Everything is stopping right here. Then if you come out into the back, you can actually see yeah. that pitches down over there. They've got huge grade issues all the way along this back corner. That being common area on the other side, we can trench a weeper through it. Okay, make it so. All right, thank you. Okay, Carlito, you got the ladder in here? Yes, sir. So, call it. Heads or tails? It doesn't matter what it is, I'm going <laughs> up. Not necessarily. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, I'll go with uh, heads. And it's tails! Oh, let me see. No, it's tails! <laughs> I would have rather spend a bit more money on the home inspector and not invest in the entire house and, and find out all these different problems later on. Well, I didn't find a lot, buddy. I did find some you stuff. Got it nice and neat. Yeah. Uh, uh, hidden junctions. Yeah, we just got one here, open face, right? And against code. Another one there, yeah. Now, the plumbing. So we had no vent upstairs, and here's the other hole exactly. they had. Yeah. I got a funny feeling that in behind the sink, it's there. Yeah, so somebody put in the new sink, whether they capped it off or not, they closed it off. There's a yeah. vent. I know there's a vent. That flex line is probably for that register that's in the floor, and they couldn't squeeze it in. We're going to see that better once you drop this side. OK. Now we're going to get Frank to check the electrical. We'll get Martin to check the plumbing. Gary is already here looking at the furnace. When I drop this ceiling, he can do a full HVAC inspection, especially the duct lines going up to the second floor. We got a big issue with this hot water tank venting. This one is not even connected. You got a big opening in this pipe. It's a four inch pipe. That's going from four to three inch. Incorrect venting. I cannot leave this like this. These people can die in here. Um, you have a carbon monoxide spilling from this venting, let alone you got a big opening gash that looks like it's never been patched inside the supply air. So you got a lot of air volume getting lost in this room. Whoever did the home inspection here should have caught this definitely if they even looked at the furnace for that matter. It's not a way to connect vent pipe. That's leaking right there. We're gonna take this down. This is really unsafe, okay? They've packed stuff on it. We're gonna give them proper shelves all the way around. We wanna get proper insulation here. We're gonna drop the ceiling in here as well, guys. We got a lot of stuff to move around in here. It just looks like you're behind the gel bars. <laughs> Let me out of here! I want out of here! The fact that we see black on pink insulation is just meaning that there's air circulation behind the wall. We're in a garage. There is not supposed to be any air penetration because what is this supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be stopping carbon monoxide and smoke from entering the house. This is why we tape our scenes. This is actually indicating that there's a lot of air movement behind this wall. What does that mean? Smoke comes in here, this fills with smoke. It's gonna be doing the same thing, getting behind the walls and getting in where it's dangerous. Mike thought there was a vent stack in the kitchen, and he was absolutely right. Instead of tearing out all the cabinets to actually get at it, Martin has come up with a better plan. I've actually dropped the trap uh, from, the, from the kitchen sink down into this uh, cavity. Yeah. I'm allowed to do that uh, because uh, I have a vent that I found in the basement that I've utilized right. for this uh, particular trap. So I was able to solve two problems within pretty much one exercise or one task, mm -hmm. clean up the kitchen drain and inside the cabinet as yep. well as uh, be able to connect the trap to the venting with an allowable limit and, and meeting all the code requirements. Very smart. I got three things when I first walked up here into that attic access. A small vent. Yeah. Only a single vent. That's right. Uh, not enough insulation, definitely. Number two. It's not fluffy enough. Yeah. And it looks like there possibly might have been mold or still is mold. And because of the insufficient venting up here, I mean, the moisture is just sitting up there. And we have some surface molding. It's nothing's too bad. I'm not too worried about that. It's not like it's black and hairy. It's just some surface molding. So I think we caught it in time. Not worried about the mold. We'll just top up the insulation and get some venting in here, buddy.
Well, it's definitely leaking, but it's not leaking tremendously. It's coming in here. I don't think it's penetrating the house. We see no signs of water damage on the inside of the house, which is good news for us. So it looks like we just have to tackle this area, figure out something to stop the water from actually getting in. The thing about the laundry room is it was one of those things of, oh, that's weird. Oh, well, we've been living in an apartment for six years and had to go down to the basement. Laundry. So we have a laundry room now. Okay, yeah, fine, I'll, I'll deal with it. <laughs> I just want you guys to lose the drywall. We're going to start playing with some ideas on how to make this functional for her and make it proper. And it'll actually give Martin access to this sink today, too, because he is going to rip that out and start fixing it. Bruce, what'd you find, man? Some issues with the piping. Tease in backwards. Right. It's just like plumbing, right? You want it to flow like this. You don't want it to have to come back all the way to this part, and then you have to go flow back into the unit. Exactly. And then we've got some short tees. It's basically clogs waiting to happen. Right. Uh, this unit is vented to the outside, so they've brought it from the garage through the basement and through the outside wall. Do we have to vent this thing? No. Great. It's so close to the ground that actually moisture and insects can get into it. Plus, there's nowhere to move it to. If we can eliminate it, that's yep. even better. I can eliminate that vent off the side altogether. No, we could do that. It's not a problem. So besides you taking that out, I, one thing I have to do today is find that drain. And I know it's under this carpet. Even if I run the camera from, uh, from this clean out, it will take me out to the street floor drain is just a branch line, which right. ties into the main line, so I will not be able to get physically access to it. Only if you had another stack. Exactly. That, right? Yeah, so um, this carpet really, even for my plumbing purposes, may have to be pulled up just so I can find the floor drain. So It's amazing, eh? We're looking for a floor drain. We moved some walls to make this a functioning basement, and look what we got to do. We got to lose, like, what, is this a five-year-old carpet? Pretty much, yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. Uh, oh, what do we got there? Is that it? Uh, give me a quick pick, please. Or is that there? I've never seen an electric plate over a drain. There's the drain. Martin, oh, see what Floor drain. Yeah. Now, this is why we didn't find it, actually. They had, like, a, a metal cap on it. Yeah. And they used floor level here. You they can actually that's, see that's it, that's so they leveled it out. That's yep. why we couldn't yep. find it. So, uh, I think we should scope it. Um, I want to know if there's any problems with it, obviously. It definitely is an original piece. It's a clay material. Yeah. Um, so the video camera will actually give us an indication of what condition this, this pipe is in and are there any issues. Right. As you can see on the screen, we do have a piece missing. Oh, um, right at the end. There's actually yeah. a section of a clay pipe that is missing. Is that what I'm looking at right That's here? That's exactly what you're looking at, yeah. There's this piece missing, and, uh, and if I pull the camera back a bit, yeah. uh, you see that crack actually continues farther up. Oh, so what this allows is literally soil to get in. Yeah. And as I was trying to push the camera farther into the floor drain, it's just completely blocked. You know, it, this can only last for so long. We're fixing the drain. So. That's what you're telling me. Yes. So the self-leveling cement was barely bonding to the floor, and I could pull it up with my fingers. So once that was up, I found the furnace drain line hidden under a strip of metal with some duct tape over the sides and silicone down. Unbelievable. That is unreal. Turn air going to the second floor through the garage. So I'm basically sealing up all the joints. There was a lot of openings in here. What happens is if you have any off-gassing from the car or anything that's in the garage, that'll get sucked up in through your return, which eventually is gonna go out through the house. So I started by putting the silver tape on. You know, the silver tape is good, but it gets cold in the garage, so eventually it'll dry out and peel. So I'm kind of going to the extreme here. Again, you know, you go to the extreme. I'm putting a sealer on top of the tape which is very flexible to hot weather, cold weather. So it'll, it'll flex in and out. It won't peel off, it won't dry out. Um, so I think, you know, that's the best way to seal this up. Get the tape on, get the sealer on. That way you get nothing leaking into the house. 
So we've already started taking a look at this. What's happening is obviously the J channel's filling from the siding, right? Well, yeah, when the siding was done, you know, they've installed basically a uh, flashing. Yeah. But typically what you want to do is, is actually make this a drip edge. So what's happening here is it's running down the face, running into the yeah. soffit overhang. So what we can do is we can slip a drip edge uh, in underneath this existing flashing yeah. and then kick it out this way. That would so actually great. And can we do that along Absolutely. the whole edge here? Yeah, front and back. The back of the home is the same situation. Right, because so. they didn't bring it low enough. You can see, actually, they didn't quite bring it low enough on the front edge as well. Yeah, even if they uh, had they dropped it below yeah. the, the elevation of the, the soffit, that would, would, would have worked as a drip. Right. Uh, but the problem here is because it's it's you know basically flush, yeah. it's just transferring the water back in. So we have some trough here that's been leaking a little bit. What do you think of it? Uh, well, it's in good shape. Are you okay with the size of it? Yeah, it's it's five inch trough. Yeah. Um, it's aluminum, so it's in it's in good shape. Right now, downspouts, other issue. Well, really, the only problem with the downpipe again, it's aluminum. Someone's gone along and stapled the uh -huh. maybe Christmas lighting into it. We're thinking Christmas lights because they did it right across the front of the house too. They came all the way down here. I mean, I thought venting. I don't know. Air behind water, right? Help it flow? Well, no, no it, it, I think that's all it was, 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 was that. Yeah. And you notice the corrugations in a downpipe, that's actually to prevent freezing. Right. Uh, because it's not a flat surface right. and, and that sort of thing. It's harder for the, the ice to cling to it. So we're going to replace um, that. So we'll just replace it with a new downpipe. As soon as Steve's guys got on the roof to actually start doing the work, they realized that all the trough had the same staple holes as the downspout did. That's why we're going all new. So when you dug this up, this is what you found? You found this PVC pipe? Pathetic. Someone has taken about a three or four inch PVC pipe here, drilled some holes in it, and is actually connected into a hole. He's created a hole into the clay drain pipe and that is what has allowed this thing to crack. And I don't want to just yank it out. If it's tied into the weeper on the outside, I don't want to just yank that out and I have a hole in my weeper on the outside. I don't know what he did. So let's break it up, dig this part out carefully, get the guys going on it, and let me see where this is going before we go any further. Get another shovel, let's just dig this out carefully, please. I want to see where this is going. Well, it's not that big of a deal, actually. It's actually better than I hoped, because this isn't actually doing anything. At least I know now I can do this and not have to worry about it. Somebody has tied this drain into the weeping system downstairs, into the homemade weeping system. It was bringing a lot of water into the house unnecessarily. And you can actually see the amount of water that's actually come in here today by looking at the corner of this patio. The panel that's there isn't, uh, isn't a bad one. The, the issue more is that uh, I've got knockouts on one side, wires are going through it, it's crammed, it's... It is. It's really tight in there. What I was thinking for you guys is actually eliminating that furnace wall there, just studding out that back wall, insulating, and just doing a basic uh, electrical panel door for you guys. Really busy day today. We have Insta Insulation coming in today. They want to spray foam the garage and the small area above the front door. We also have Adam and Martin in the basement today, and they're fixing the drain problem. Now, they are calling for rain, which is actually a good thing, finally. We have Tail coming today. He wants to see where the water collects so we can actually finalize and fix our problems. Lots of work going on. We've got the floor drain set up. This will be trimmed uh, when the final level is set. Absolutely, I'll get my floor in and then we'll cut it flush afterwards yep. and I'll just stick the drain cap in. Yep. So that's actually perfect. We have the drain within the laundry room now. That's awesome. Now we have one last drain to take care of. That's the one we're installing in the backyard. Teo, you get, it's a perfect day to see why we're actually doing this drain. We got about three inches of water already. It's been raining only a little bit this morning, right? So. One problem, we've got a gas line right where we want to put the drain. 
I have two hydro lines back there that come off the transformer at the end, two major electrical lines. We also have cable back there, plus who knows what else. So we really don't want to start digging back there. Let's swing it that way. Let's you want to swing it out this swing, way? Swing right under the fence. This way we can go a little bit steeper, get the water out of here right away. So we don't have freezing issues and everything else. I like that idea, let's do that, okay? So let's start mapping this out. Let's get the guys digging. This isn't gonna let up and it's not gonna be fun. Guys, I wanna leave the gas line where it is so we always know. I want you to just peel up this corner of the patio stones right here. You might as well start trenching it. I like the leaf catcher idea, so even if the leaves sit on the bottom here, water can raise up and it can still get make its way in here. It's smart. And the other thing is too, it's got a sump in the bottom, so there's a space for the homeowner to get in there once a year, twice a year, to get in there, clean all the debris out of the bottom of the unit. Which they should do on a regular basis, yeah. at least you know, twice a year. You don't want any contamination think. getting into the field. Right, right, right. Pitch on this. Your pitch is pretty good right now? Yep. We're installing a new type of weeping system that's essentially a weeping tile surrounded by pieces of polystyrene and encased in a geotextile. It cuts down on gravel and construction costs in the end, and it's completely made of recycled materials, which is always a good thing. Now all the water that used to collect on the patio can actually flow into the drain, out through the weeping system, and leach into the surrounding area. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. We gotta make sure that uh, all the gaps are 100% sealed. If they park their car in here, we don't want carbon monoxide going into the house. So we got it insulated and everything, drywalled, mud it, call it a day. Okay, so what we wanna do is we're ready now for drywalling the ceiling, guys. I just wanna insulate the back plate, that's the outside wall. Get that done, okay? So get a piece of insulation in each void. So we'll get some drywall down. Maybe someone can jump on that. Okay, and let's get it done today. Well, it looks like a mess to everybody else. Everybody asks me, well, how do you know what is what? I'm used to it. I know what is what. I got to replace my lines that are coming from the meter base outside in. About half an hour and about another hour to cut this in. So give me about two hours. Now, uh, we'll have this powered up. So the existing issue with the attic on this home was that it wasn't vented properly, both with the roof fence as well as the soffits not being open enough with the plywood coverings. We're gonna cut large openings around the perimeter of the house to allow the cooler fresh air into the attic as an intake. Cutting out our uh, opening at the ridge for the ridge vent that's being installed, that's the most ideal spot to vent the roof is right at that uh, top peak where all that warm air is traveling to, correcting the soffits, the roof fence, and the attic insulation with proper uh, baffles. It's gonna really get the airflow going in this attic. We did not peek at we all. Didn't look. We didn't We uh, came by to pick up our mail from our neighbor, but even walking by... I'm not looking! Room.
That's good enough, guys. We'll wait till the side gets here, and then we'll do, we'll border this whole thing, okay? So what we're doing today is we're priming bare drywall in the garage. It's about two to three times harder than priming over uh, painted or primed drywall. It just it sucks it up, it's uh, very porous. So what a lot of guys will do is they'll thin the primer down so it spreads a little easier, but by doing that, they're killing the durability and the adhesion qualities of the primer. So what I'm gonna do is spray it on full strength, back roll it to really press it in, and uh, that'll leave a smooth, even finish on the wall. This box on the outside is a weatherproof box. It's a metal enclosure. They're rated to be installed outdoors because they're sealed. Plus, with the cover that I have on here, there's a rubber gasket that stops moisture and water from coming in. If you remember before, it was all pipe work. It was just, just a big mess. I was able to run all the wires on the inside. We ran a new circuit for the outside plug because it was tied in with stuff inside, plus with the lights. Done all wrong. Now it's a dedicated line. And also now, when they go to turn the lights on and off, it is the proper way. Sorry for taking so long. We had to no clean up the driveway and make it right, make it look good. Nice to right? see you. Look at, I love this part. Yeah. <laughs> we always do this. <laughs> so you know what? Is we built you a new house. Awesome. <laughs> you know I'm kidding. Yeah. Come on. Okay. But Come the garage on. looks nice. Well, it's actually somewhat new, somewhat clean. Yeah. This is actually a nice steel mm -hmm. insulated mm -hmm. door done mm -hmm. properly. Opens <laughs> in, not out. But not that yeah. the other one did. It was just completely all wrong. Yeah. Uh, I love this. We brought in a, a specialist when it comes to the central vac. And if you look at this, he laughed and said some elbows were wrong, some fittings were wrong. Uh, we removed the vent, which I'll show you in the side of the house. But you have a brand new one, by the way. Yay. And actually, <laughs> top of the line, you're really going to like it. It's... Does it actually suck stuff up? Yes, it will. <laughs> it, it will. It will actually suck stuff up. <laughs> we had the central vac system. And uh, I was using a regular vacuum for a lot of the house because the suction wasn't there. So to have something that actually works <laughs> is so cool. Nice and clean, good yes. electrical, everything's proper. Uh, I'm happy with it. And then Damon did the extra little. Oh, that's great. Well, I really love the little shelves you guys had hanging here. Oh, but yeah. uh, you know, I was afraid of killing. Yeah. I almost killed him on the first day. But that is not a shelf to no. use. The way that was put together, I'm yeah. surprised it never came down on your car yeah. or you. That's right. yeah. This whole wall, this whole ceiling, that whole wall is completely insulated. And I absolutely guarantee it won't be cold upstairs. Perfect. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's walk around the front. All right. We also pulled down the front soffit here and made sure we insulated that, put in a nice perforate. It makes it look clean. It's totally insulated. If you notice, you have a new mm -hmm. piece of aluminum across there. So now it's completely cocked across the top. You'll have no water penetration at that point. I'm happy. And notice there's no vent here. Where's the vents? Yeah, they disappeared. It's, gone. it's, gone. it's because both were removed. We brought two high vents up here, which is the proper oh, okay. way of doing it. Okay. I asked Damon to put in a gable vent, and that's in your attic space. So that gable vent will now bring in the fresh air as much as on the roof. Brought in Steve. That's He's right. got new east drops, downspouts. I don't know if you noticed. Oh. And on top of your roof, not only do we have a gable vent, but we put in a ridge vent. 
New soffit vent underneath, ridge vent on top, gable vent. Now we're going to have that air pull through the area that is very important. Mm -hmm. Not to mention there's about an R50 of additive in your attic of insulation. Was it like R20? Yeah. It was about half of that, yeah. 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 Remember that big waterfall of yeah. water that yes. came upon here? <laughs> well, now you have an actual drain. Oh. We dug the trench all the way over to that side with a big pit, so the water, this gets picked up. We had some heavy rain in the past couple yeah. of days, and this took it. Yeah. A wonderful new uh, weeping system that we put in place. It's like a big sock, and all it is is just really, it's a, like a white foam pebble. Does not let any dirt in. No stones needed. Directly out to a big pit that's out there, completely sealed. Good. Let's take a look at the basement. <gasps> oh my god! You got new carpet. <gasps> And I'm wearing booties, so I don't damage this carpet. Yeah, really. And you have handrails. Oh my god, it looks sides. like a real basement, <laughs> like a nice, beautiful basement. New handrail. We brought in a professional yeah. to do this. And actually, you did a really great job on it. Spindles. We want this safety. You have enough room to bring things down and bring it through, so I, I made the call and said, go ahead and put it up. This is cool, <laughs> having the railings and stuff going down, because before, we just had the one single rail going all the way down and now it's got the spindles and another one on the other side so you know Hayden going down the stairs or any other our niece and nephew going down the stairs they're safe they can hold on and and get down and it's beautiful look at it <laughs> door number one yeah it's just under the stairs but there's now a wall there and this town turned into completely just storage wow. door number two <laughs> Where did all these doors come from? <laughs> oh my god! Yay. So you have a proper laundry sink. Let's go to the other doors. Because everything was so tight, we wanted to make sure that you had it proper. Yeah. Washer and dryers now plumb properly, electrical. Damon awesome. even pulled the drain that was over here under the floor, brought it in to the washer and dryer area, and now from the furnace is channel line to the drain. And then now the drain's on the right spot, because if you have a flood there, they don't want to ruin your new carpet, right? right? Yeah. yeah. So you have uh, pretty well a lot of new drywall. The ceiling is dropped, new pot lights. As we walk through, it looks a little different. You yeah, like the color down here, at least? I mean, this <laughs> yeah. is a little Yeah, it's crazy. beautiful. <laughs> Why does it look different? Hmm, hmm, what'd we do? <gasps> oh, you took out the wall. We took out the wall. The wall is gone. And this is this that's the is this door number that's the door eight? to the <laughs> that's, that's the door to the new gazebo. Oh my god. Oh, it's brand new. oh. so you have a new panel. Yeah. Surge protection doesn't mean don't get a surge power bar for your TV, but it will back up the whole house. Always put in something as you're just, you know, I lost everything in my house from lightning. I don't want anybody else to get it. We also took down the entire ceiling to check on the wiring and plumbing, and the bros made sure all of the ductwork was working properly. And they also installed a new gas line, fixed the venting to the hot water tank and the furnace. They had to make sure there's absolutely no more off gassing. Just looking around, I just lose my vocabulary. I can't. <laughs> it's just, I can only say amazing. Yeah. I, 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 it's just, it's great. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I usually get the He's change. getting the tip. I usually get the change. <laughs> I know. I thought I'd be fixing Thank you so much. Hey, my pleasure. My pleasure. I hope you enjoy it. Everything's functional now, everything's yes. safe. That's what I care about, you know, safe yes. and then functional. But I'm a happy man. You did a good job. Thanks, buddy. Everything, it was just, you know, you kind of put these things through your head, like what could they do? And it was just beyond our expectations. Just, you know, uh, uh, incredible. High five. Oh, please don't end it with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> we figured as some Did you do a painting? painting? Maybe. Oh, oh, no way. <laughs> Did you need that? Do I look like that? <laughs> <laughs> you gave me more hair, too. <laughs> that is really good. Two awesome. little things, no earrings. I'm going to cherish this. Thank you. <laughs> Can I give you a hug? Of course. <laughs> I won't get my Thank sandwich you. on you. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank I really you, everybody. That. The home inspector uh, didn't find any major issues uh, except the ones we already knew about. Clear! and he was very, very impressed with geothermal pump as well. It's really a badly crippled uh, system, right. you know, as it's sitting right now. The house was constantly cold, 14, 15, 16 degrees. The problem is whoever touched this house contaminated it to the point, look what I have to do to fix it. We are tired of this winter. We are tired of our problems. You just need the system to work.
Isabella and Valdemar wanted to downsize from a townhouse, move into a nice mature neighborhood, and they fell in love with this house. Well maintained, manicured property, great backyard, and as an added bonus, geothermal cooling and heating technology. Now here's the unfortunate part. There was a bidding war, and in that bidding war, they dropped the inspection. They did bring in a home inspector on their own after they bought the house. Did he miss all kinds of things? I'm gonna do a homes inspection. I'm gonna make it right. We were looking for the house in the mature neighborhood uh, with the beautiful uh, trees, big backyard, so we can enjoy ourselves uh, after work and feel like uh, we are living in the park. I have two passions in my life, dogs and bonsais. And this house was perfect. You can play with the dog and the backyard is big enough to have all my bonsais. We like what we saw, especially after uh, seeing other houses in this neighborhood. This house uh, looked very beautiful. We were very happy because it also offered uh, already installed working um, green energy system. We didn't have the home inspection before we bought the house, but we decided to have one after we, we were moved in. We were counting on this inspection very much. We were the owner. So he could touch anything, he could uh, move anything, he had all permissions. The home inspector uh, didn't find any, any major issues uh, except the ones we already knew about. Well, hello. Hi. Hello. Okay, let's get this right. Isabella. Uh, nice I'm, to meet you. I'm Mike, nice to meet you, and Valdemar. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Come on outside, let's start on the outside. We were very happy, we were happy that uh, not only we uh, saw the, the houses, sound and nice looking uh, he he confirmed our um, impression he said perfect uh, and he was very very impressed with geothermal pump as well i've read you've had all kinds of issues mm -hmm. with your hvac heating ventilation air conditioning uh, yes. the pump started uh, breaking circuit breakers uh, tripping circuit breakers so we ran downstairs and uh, switched uh, it, it back on. Sometimes by the time you get back down, uh, upstairs, uh, you can hear the click, oh, it stopped again. So welcome to our no, house. thank you. We were desperate. We were trying to do whatever uh, to keep us and the house uh, warm. So you're freezing in the winter and you're hot in the summer. Yes. Despite all the blankets, additional blankets that we bought, uh, we tried what we could, uh, uh, you know, and you're still uh, freezing. I'm going to take a look through everything. I'm going to tell you why, OK? Because I got a bad feeling, but that's just, well, I already looked at the paperwork. We'll take it as it comes. The pump was working less and less. The cold was, uh, house was constantly cold, 14, 15, 16 degrees. And you get the bill. And the first bill, instead of promised by the previous owner $200, uh, you get $850. We have no heat here? No. no. Oh, there's one uh, over there. It's behind the cabinet? Yes. OK, so we, and we have a baseboard. Uh -huh. We have a baseboard. Home inspector afterwards said baseboard heaters are considered supplemental. Okay. I don't like this. You have one of the best heating sources in the mm -hmm. world using geothermal technology. Mm -hmm. Do you understand geothermal technology? Yes, yes we Using do. ground temperature, mm -hmm. right? The average temperature of the Earth is around 14 degrees Celsius. We have vertical loops that go into the ground. We're running liquids through those pipes that become that temperature. We bring them into the house, into that geothermal unit. We can now heat and cool the home efficiently. Mm -hmm. Still a nice home, but nice homes can have problems. I'm going to grab my tools. I'm going to closely look through your home. I'm going to see what we need to do. Uh, I have a bad feeling we need to replace everything to do with your heating. Because that's just the way that it was run. It's not the way to run this. We were very much concerned about the uh, ducting system going through the attic. But he said, no, it's perfect. It's not a problem. You just give this more insulation. Amazing, eh? They get a home inspector in here to take a look. And what do I see? And here we have some electrical that's been done. And you see the two wires here. We have a very, very loose box here, which I don't like. But what happens when we look here? It's tied into an extension cord. Extension cord comes down to the switch. Totally against code, which I did not read in the report. 
Other things we don't do is take a Romex line like this and just clip it on around, especially inside the garage. The pro about this is it's up high. You can't hit it, and as long as it's at a certain height, it should be a BX or an armored cable, just for safety purposes. And I said a lot of the ductwork was run through closets, and you can see clearly. It just box this in. Kind of stupid. The floor's open for me. This is an air return in the closet. Look at the dust build up on the wall here. They've got an air return in the closet. That's moronic. I am getting nice cool air out of here, so this is good. The problem is I don't have enough throughout the house, and as long as I have an air return in the closet, no other air return here, we have pro improper airflow. See all the black? That means at one time, somebody's used these baseboard heaters quite a bit, and what doesn't mix is a very hot source of flammable wood. Whenever you install one of these heat registers, it says right on it that nothing can be above it. It must be installed on the outside of the wall and not a wall built out over top of it. Fire hazard, that's most definitely. I can't believe it hasn't burned the house down. From a nice built house to someone who's come in and done some work. <laughs> Look at this. This is the drip line from the furnace. They've trapped a drain in the vent line, which means you can actually do it. But this is methane gas coming out of here. There's no trapping that air from coming back right on the main sewage line. So just allow all this to bleed back in. Look at this. This really is starting to upset me. That's not right. I had a home inspector go through the house. Did he point this out? No. Mm, let's see what else I find. I don't see a vent. I see mold. <laughs> so no air vent. There's nothing in the wall. I don't know if it's vented through the floor, then it's vented behind the, the trap and not in front of the trap. The home inspector did say something about the mold, but nothing about the venting issues. This is a new system. I want to know if permits were pulled. Very sloppy installation on the ductwork. They've opened up this return and they got a sharp piece of metal on this pipe. We have copper touching ductwork. Yes, we want to return down here, but we don't want to return like this with all the pipes running through it. Look at this. That is an extension cord that runs over to a switch with no grommet on the box. And that's supposed to use an extension cord, by the way. And where does that run to? Oh, look. Look at how they spliced in. See that splice right there? You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> now I'm not a happy guy at all. And I'm mad at everyone. The inspector might not have known anything about geothermal, but he should have seen these problems. This is not the way to insulate an attic, I'll tell you right now. They've insulated in between the ceiling joists, and then they insulate over top. So one to run one way, one to run the other way, and they'll sandwich it. The problem is, is that all your edging is going to allow bleeding out. So no matter what, the heat loss is going to be large in here. So they're going to lose heat in the winter. The biggest problem I see is they've taken the center of the house, they've ran the channel up, or the main trunk line that comes off the HVAC, the geothermal unit. They brought it up into the attic and dispersed their hoses out and dropped it back in the ceiling. So. We're gonna have a reverse effect here. In the summer, when you're trying to blow cool air into your attic, it is so hot like it is right now that it's competing with hot air. This is a hot zone. In the winter, it's a very cold zone. And the problem with that is it's gonna compete with the cold. By the time it actually shuts off, it's not gonna be so warm in the house. I wanna see Damon. There's no information, there's no documentation whatsoever about this geothermal. Where's the wells? How many wells were dug? Yeah. You would think if you're gonna sell the house and do this, you want a report to go with it. The problem was nobody wanted to come. Nobody wanted to come. Everybody would say, what kind of system you have? Sorry, we are uh, servicing only systems that we know that we installed. I was called in because they have a geothermal heating cooling system. Love it. Yeah. There's no information. There's no documentation whatsoever. I'm bringing in the geothermal guys. Yeah. 
So what we want to do is find out where the hell they dug the wells. We're yeah. going to have to talk to them first because okay. I don't want to just dig blindly and, right. and, you know, hey, look, we found worms. Yeah. <laughs> The problems that I have here is that I, I don't want to take this down. I love this. The old the old lath and plaster, this just works really yeah, well. Yeah, because this is a cement finish. This is a real drag to come down. But Gary is going to want to get in here. He talked to me about it a little bit, and he does want to do some runs in here. He wants to eliminate bulkheads on the inside. Well, we're not going to do what they did and run all the flex right. lines through the center of the house, up to the attic, like back octopus. down to the house. Yeah. We're going to have to do it like a standard home, okay. which means I'm going to take down the ceiling. So there are bedrooms, a bathroom, and an office right above us. So the best way to get heat lines into those areas is through the garage ceiling. Geothermal systems, the, the way that you really benchmark the piece of equipment is based on what's going on in the actual loop itself. So what we need to be able to do is actually take a pressure temperature reading right here on the equipment. Yeah. And what you would typically find is a peat spark. And that's a pressure temperature gauge that actually sits on this connection. So it tells us the temperature. Right, so what we can do is we can take a pressure reading on the supply in, and we can take a temp pressure reading and temperature reading on the return out, and that will tell us whether this piece of equipment is operating correctly. Now there's two temperature gauges, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that's what you're talking about, Pete's port that are just on the other side of that doorway there, what would they be for? Right, so you have a pressure temperature gauge that's mounted. The problem with the mounted gauge is like anything, it'll actually lose calibration over time. Okay. You wanna go in and do testing with equipment that you're familiar with, uh, whether it's digital or not digital, so you can take readings directly at the unit. We don't care what's happening out in the loop field, we care what's happening right here on the piece of equipment. And internally, there's just issues everywhere. Simple little things like, when you look at where the flow center's connected here, you can see we've got solid connections. But yet, when we look at the return one, we've got silliness like we've got this red tubing, right? This should be a straight connection going out all the way through. And for some reason, they've decided they wanted to put in some red garden hose. So what we'd want to really verify with the equipment is it's actually got a domestic hot water option. Mm -hmm. And what that means, it actually does preheat on the water in the home. We oh, want to, right? We want to actually verify, A, is that hooked up? Uh, and the other thing is actually just verify the operation of the equipment. We have no idea if this, I mean, the equipment may run, but that doesn't mean anything. It's like a, an air conditioner. You can have an air conditioner that runs. If it doesn't cool the air, who cares? Right. You know, we really need to get to the bottom of this. Well, it sounds like it's working, right? Yeah, you well, you running. can hear it running. Yeah, if the fan's turning, that doesn't mean it's working. Okay, <laughs> so you're going to go through this, and then you're going to tell me what you find. And I already know we're taking it out, but I'm really curious to see what they've done wrong. Right. The geothermal guys want some of this ceiling open. We can see that there's an actual vent right here, and there's a vent right behind you. So right where my arm span is, okay, guys? Right from there to there. You're gonna pop the rest of all these tiles, these ceiling tiles in that room, this room, and you're gonna come in here, and I want this drywall just on the bottom of this room down, okay? Uh, basically, we're just trying to uh, trace the geothermal lines, see exactly where they go to outside, and then uh, I believe we're gonna be doing some digging. Okay, we have MJ, Carl, and Rob in the basement exposing some of the ductwork for the geothermal guys. We need to do the same up here in all the closets. So this one in the closet directly above us, all this drywall needs to come down to see what they use here, okay? This is a big job. The old duct used to run up into the closet, used to go all the way up to the second floor, and then distribute out into the attic. Not every floor, not every room had returns. They had one in a closet that was kind of basically your main one for the second floor, and then they had one on the main floor. Not enough return, supply distributed unevenly, a uh, lot of cold spots in the house, a lot of hot spots in the house. Distribution ductwork was terrible here. So for us, it's a lot of work. It's ripping out all the old stuff and completely installing new stuff, new ductwork, new heating runs, new returns in each room. Massive job. Rob, I had the guys open up the ceiling because obviously we want to find where they went outside. Now, it's funny that we see this. I thought right away that we had two lines going out, but I think one of them is an underground uh, sprinkler. Mm -hmm. This would be the geothermal out to the vertical wells, right? Right. Grade is right here. They are right underneath the ground. Right. So that's just going to freeze. Uh, you should definitely be below the frost line, yes, which typically that, that would be minimum that we would like to see is three feet. All right. Let's take a hole. 
Joel, I can't tell you that we're bored, but we're definitely going to help you, okay? Um, yeah, you got a tarp there. You want us to set up another tarp? What are we trying to do here? We're just trying to follow the line? Yeah, we're just trying to find uh, the entry point, which uh, we suspect is only about a foot to a foot and a half down. Yeah. Uh, just trying to find where it goes in, see what's happening. OK, around. well, let's get these guys involved, too. Let's get them all digging here. Sure. That's it right there, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. And it's insulated? It's insulated at least, which is a positive, but we just got to see where it goes now. We have to keep digging in order to find that loop field, because if it's in good shape, we might be able to reuse it. Everything we've seen so far is a little messed up, isn't it? One thing that was, I think, of real concern is the fact that the lines were buried so shallow. What are we at, about a foot, foot and a half here? Yeah, generally, we we looked at the whole site, and that's about what everything was, was buried at. It's just about one foot below ground level, which um, kind of sends up some red flags. The other thing that's a real concern is that all of this is right in the tree roots. Anytime anyone ever does anything on the, this property, if they go to dig in another tree or shrub or uh, if there's any utilities, right. point. they'll be right into these lines. I mean, isn't this sending up enough red flags that we we stop here at this point? I, I, I think so. I think we wanted to make sure that either we were 100% uh, good with, with reusing it or if it made a case for replacement. Which what you're saying is I don't think you want to attach to this. No, I think we've seen enough to know that we're probably uncomfortable with doing that. I think that's the best call. So now that we've decided that the loop field is not reusable, the geothermal guys can fuse the old lines together to make sure nothing leaches back into the ground. And while they finish up, our guys can gut the entire basement. I mean, there was electrical issues, off-gassing issues, there was no plumbing vents in the bathroom. I mean, a lot of problems. And at this point, it's just faster and cheaper to start from scratch. So what do you see wrong with the unit? You know, a couple of the complaints that the owners had were in regards to the noise, for one thing, and uh, also the high utility bills that they were experiencing. And uh, one thing that we're seeing here is, uh, as far as noise go, it is quite noisy when the unit is running. Why is that? Is that well, the, the piping has been run directly from the machine, which there is a certain level of vibration that is created by the compressor in okay. this. And they were attached, like, right up to the floor joists of the, the house right oh, above okay. this. Oh, okay. So as soon as it's vibrating, it's vibrating the house. Right. So the harmonics would go right I up through the, through the floor of this area that's, uh, that's right above us here. Um, another thing that we did find, though, when we ran the thing through the performance check was that it had a bit of a problem. Probably a mechanic that was working on this previously overcharge the the system with refrigerant so okay. that that may in fact have damaged the compressor so the output is not where it should be another thing too is maybe just grab onto that that line right there damon oh is that ever hot right and, and that um this machine hasn't run for several days Good and yet point. and yet you can feel how hot those lines are so this heat is actually convecting from the electric water heater that this is attached uh -huh. to. So that could explain some of the high utility bills that they have, because right. actually it's taking heat from the hot water heater and running it the opposite way. Instead of using the geothermal, it's actually running off that. Right, yeah. It, it, this is contributing uh -huh. to the heat output of the, of the machine. Again, because primarily of the damaged compressor that it has in it right now. So how are we going to get this unit out? Or how are you going to get the unit out? <laughs> Well, we'll just disconnect all the lines, and I think we can slide it over there to the uh, to the opening, and then we have a cart that we can load that onto and uh, and get it up the stairs. One, two, three. Two. Okay. Unfortunately, we're having some drilling done today for the geothermal lines, and they're going to do smack dab in the middle of this driveway. Do I want to take this up? Not at all, but we have to. They're going to have to dig here today, so I'm going to just cut a 10-foot swath right through here. Give them a nice digging area.
You're already gonna do new east drops and downspouts, I can tell right there. Probably wouldn't hurt to put some smart screen on this side of the house, maybe the back side as well due to the trees. New soft vents, probably remove the old louvers, they're probably packed with you know, insulation, dirt, and yeah, yeah, and such. Yeah. So remove the existing ones, replace them with new, and then add uh, additional soft vents. So really busy day today. We have the new geothermal unit here, which means we can put the house back together, get the homeowners back home. Okay, guys, if you actually want to spin in here, this is the home of the new furnace room right in here. Now, we're going to install the unit in a new utility room that we built instead of the crawl space where the old one was. And this will make it easier to install and a lot more accessible. My guys are actually framing like crazy. We're just trying to keep ahead of all the HVAC installation that's happening today. Now, Gary's pre-made most of the ductwork, so he and Rob have to position the unit perfectly. And slide that over, It looks perfect. Sure. Martin is here to reroute existing plumbing and run any new lines that are needed for the geothermal unit. And last but not least, we have Frank here today. He's going to start rewiring the entire basement and make sure any changes we need for the new HVAC system are in place. Two lights. I'm thinking one about here. Yeah. Because it's going to be equipped in here. Yeah. And a second light around here somewhere. Okay, but you're going to have ductwork coming right through here, right? So well, you... I'll talk to Gary, double check where that's going to all end up, okay. and then I'll, I'll center off another light. Day today we got to finish off getting the rest of the supply in get the return in we got the electrician here plumber here so we're all trying to work together to get our jobs done so today's a big day got to get a lot of duck up get a lot of the rough ends in um, that way everybody else can keep going actually you're two, almost two and a half there right? you want to lift it up for him? yes So the piping that we're putting in now, we're just making sure that the pressure drop is minimal, uh, trying to keep as few uh, 90 degree elbows as possible between here and outside. And uh, yeah, making sure too that it's, it's properly insulated and that all the uh, tail ends of the insulation are, are properly sealed so there's no chance of any condensation happening and uh, coming down through the, uh, the finished ceiling when that's all said and done. Okay, he's doing return, return. Where, where does he want his supplies? Well, he's got six lines coming through, including the return airlines, and we're, he wants four. to come through the wall here. To return four feeds. Okay, we don't want to come under floor joists at all. I don't want to restructure this. I prefer we go through the floor joists. Let's go inside. Well, that's why I was calling you in. I didn't want to do that until I talked to you. Cut open the ceiling across here, and don't be afraid to take the floor. So come in, we'll build the wall out. Come up through the floor, have them use the void in between. So we don't have to go through the brick. As much as you can go okay. through the floor, Joyce, I prefer. And you but know that it's gonna be two by six wall here. I'm fine with that. Because they're gonna lose a bit of space. I'm fine with me. that, the living room's big enough. It's huge, yeah. uh, You're gonna have bulkheads one way or the other, so it's right. better just to put up a new wall and then spray this wall. Yep. Right, spray it right to the outside. Gotcha. Good? Absolutely. Love it. Drilling geothermal heating. We've got six holes to do at 135 feet. We're expecting mostly sand and clay here, so it should be pretty easy drilling. We stick 10 feet apart always per hole just to get the heat out of the ground properly. Uh, if they're too close together, the system's not going to work properly. Now, a rotary drill is used to bore into the ground 10 feet at a time. Water is then fed down the center of the pipe, and this forces the earth from the hole up to the surface. And then that basically sits in our pan here. We dig it out with a shovel and then put it on the ground, make a big mess. And then at the end? And then at the end, we get it all vacuum trucked up. You'll never know where you're here. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we've got a 10-foot length of drill rod on there. The bit's attached to the end of it. We're ready to go, pretty much. Just going to mix up some mud and let it fly. This is a quick job. 
basically, it, uh, with the right amount of quick draw, you can build the walls of your hole with it. We gotta keep our hole open, put the pipe down, it's, uh, it's our objective there. So we're going to pull a brand new feed into this box here, directly from the panel. So the original feed was uh, this wire here. Then they ended up using this wire, which is called a 14-3, which brings a current and a switch line over into this beautiful contraption. So we're going to lose all this and just bring in a brand new line right from the panel. It was mostly smooth. We hit a boulder on one hole slowed us down a little bit, but uh, it's better than most jobs, that's for sure. Just rolled out 135 feet. So we're just gonna get it ready and tape it to our stinger rod and get it ready to sink in the ground. loop, a three-quarter inch loop, and this is the end. We'll tape it to our stinger rod here, and then when we put it in the ground, the stinger rod's just gonna help us push it in the ground. Yeah, electrical tape will hold it together. That's the trick for us. So as soon as we complete drilling each hole, we have to pull all our rods out one at a time, and then we go ahead and we put our loop down the hole. It's lowered down with a winch cable, drops the loop to the bottom of the hole, and then we basically just pull that back out with the winch, leave the loop in the ground, and then uh, onto the grouting. So although this house has a multitude of problems, we're here to solve a couple on the exterior. We've got some uh, soffit louvers that are uh, quite jammed up with dirt and debris. Uh, so we're going to be installing some new uh, vents themselves, upgrading the eaves troughs. They're um, older four-inch troughs that have sagged and, and lost their flow. So we'll be removing those and installing a five-inch seamless eaves trough and installing a smart screen to keep all the leaves and debris out of them. The other issue we talked about with Mike uh, on the soffits here, you'll see a lot of this um, mold or mildew kind of uh, uh, starting to appear on the soffits themselves. Uh, again, due probably just to uh, venting, uh, poor lack of venting in the soffit, um, potentially ice dams and such, uh, because the air wasn't being able to circulate up through the soffit into the attic and then carried out by the roof vents. Well, we're gonna vent the soffit properly so that it actually gets some airflow in there so that it doesn't uh, reoccur. So Jeff, what's the process? You have a grout truck coming and a vacuum truck? Once we finish our holes, we move our truck out of here. Uh, he'll start pumping grout down the hole, and at the same time, the vacuum will sit over top of the hole, and it'll basically just suck away any slop that comes out. And what's the grout doing? The grout has a number of purposes, actually. It provides a good thermal conductivity for the hole, which means that uh, the heat transfer is better through grout than it does through the water that would be down there. Right, so it'll lose heat if you don't encase it. Exactly, right. exactly. Uh, it's also to prevent what we call hole sink, and hole sink's just a dip that you might see later on down the road from the hole caving in on itself. Right. Another purpose would be so that the surface water doesn't contaminate any ground drinking water or something like that down there. Okay, after all this, you're gonna spray foam drywall? Mm-hmm. We're almost there. End of the week, we're spray foaming, drywalling early next week. And all mold-free drywall, yes? Absolutely. That's what we love. It's very shocking. I never expected so much work has to be done here. We knew about the heating system. We knew we had problems, but we never expected that there is so many other things. Oh, 
this looks fantastic. Okay, we're finally ready. My geothermal, my electrical and plumbing is all done. Within my walls now, I'm ready for spray foam. Now we have three locations to spray foam. We're gonna hit the garage ceiling and we're gonna hit the living room back wall. Instead of spraying in the garage, we're gonna spray on the interior instead. And of course, the basement. We're gonna hit all perimeter walls. Get ready for drywall. So what are we looking at in terms of days here? It's a day job, pretty much. I bought four guys in yeah. to make sure I got it done uh, quick so the tapers can get started. I'd say and you guys flew on out. this, buddy. Like, there's a lot done. So this is great. I can call my mutters in almost immediately. Like, we had spray foam yesterday. You guys are already drywalled 90% of the, the basement here. Yeah, it uh, moves fast when you got good guys. Absolutely. Come on up, start cutting everything. That way, I'll start cutting everything this way. Bring it towards here, and we'll shove it down, okay? Okay. All the original heat ducts in the attic are connected to ceiling vents throughout the house. Now, we have to remove the ducts and plug all the holes, because we do not want cold air or hot air, depending on the season, coming back in. Today we're going to uh, dig up all of the vertical bores and then we're going to uh, bring them back uh, and manifold them all together which will distribute the water solution uh, throughout all of the pipes uh, equally. So I saw you making, I'll call it the flute. Just tell me what you're making here, it looks like a manifold to me but... Yeah, basically uh, our inch and a quarter header lines yep. that we uh, brought to here, right. uh, we'll connect into the end of this manifold here. The loop solution will go in, it's an inch and a quarter, and then it manifolds off into uh, three quarter lines. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, which represents the different supplies to each bore. We will need to uh, fuse all of these into this manifold here. Right. And then f uh, from there, we'll uh, put some pressure on it, make sure it's good. We'll hook a, a compressor up at the machine right. and pressure it all up, and then we'll backfill once we've tested it. Big day today. The geothermal is actually done in the yard. We have Rob from Buchanan and Hall today actually coming to turn it on. We have drywalling happening, we have mudding happening, doors are going in today. All the last little finishing touches, plus turning the furnace on. The end goal today would be to get the unit on. We're gonna do our final tests to make sure that we have proper numbers going through the machine. And basically, um, we wanna make sure that the machine's taking enough heat out of the water to make sure it's, it's operating the way it should. We can also adjust fan speeds to um, to satisfy the customer's, uh, you know, comfort level. I'm just caulking around all our baseboard and trim so we can finish up so the painters can do everything and we'll have a nice finish. I just want to know a couple of the differences between what was here, what was stuffed under that crawl space, and what the new unit's doing for us. One of the major complaints was in regards to the noise. And when we did run that unit, there was um, a lot of noise and vibration that came from that, and that resonated right up through the floor and into their living room. Right. As you can hear, this one is running it's right, quiet. right now. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's running full out, and we're able to have a, a conversation, and it's, you know, it's almost right. about as quiet as a as a good quality refrigerator, really. Right. That's about all the noise that it would make. One of the other complaints they had was that they didn't know how to contact about any of this. So when they needed to fix it, 
there's nothing here. The paperwork's been lost over the years. They had nothing. And what you're telling me is that this system will actually tell them what is wrong. Your number's on the inside of the thermostat upstairs and it'll actually read it out to them and they can actually go over the phone and tell them exactly what is wrong with this unit. Right, there's diagnostic lights that are right on the front of the machine down here and uh, those lights read, again, if there is a fault, it will read here, but it will also read what that fault is up on the thermostat right. and it'll store that there. It even displays the, uh, the type of machine, the model that it is, the serial number, right. all of that information is right there handy for them. If it's done properly, I mean, it's, they're a great system. I don't know where you've been staying, but I hope you've been comfortable. Very where did you stay? Yes. Uh, with my daughter. With your In, daughter? Yes. Okay, yes. so that's not so she bad. Was, no, no. This whole driveway pretty well was all pulled up. Relayed everything here, cleaned up the bush line. Even I thought it was impressive. You know, as we walk over and take a look, new east drops, new downspouts, which really has cleaned up the whole front. Yeah. That's that way all the way around the house, including on the back of the house, put in some smart screen to stop the leaves from getting in your east drop and blocking the system. We got to talk a little bit about what we found. You already knew the last time I brought you here that uh, the geothermal was just below grade. So we went six holes, 135 feet deep. We did a whole new vertical loop system in your front yard, fixed it all up, and you can't even tell we were here. So uh, a lot of work was done inside your garage. Uh, we had to pull down the whole ceiling, right? Because what we had to do was refeed your whole house with new heating. So all new dock lines, everything had to be redone. With the insulation, we make sure we spray foam on this, right? So we get all our duct work in. We want to we want to keep it on the warm side. So you brought the ceiling down, is that right? Absolutely. We dropped the ceiling by, I'd say, maybe a foot and a half. So you're going to see a lower ceiling here, but there is a hell of a lot of spray foam up above it. And it's clean. Like we had to come through the wall it's with how many runs? Work. Six runs. Six runs altogether came through that wall. Whoa. So just above this, this is where we had to feed. There's a room above, so we have to get your basic heat runs to the front of the windows. It took a lot of work. It's beautiful, it's just... Already? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, I'm so happy already. <laughs> and you now have a door closer, so you got to make sure that door doesn't close on you. Okay. So now we got to hold it. Awesome. Okay, let's start in the hallway here. Uh, you remember when uh, the first time I opened this closet, mm. it wasn't a closet, right? No. no. Because they damaged the floor, we fixed yes. the floor yeah. and yes. put in a tile floor. So know. it's now a closet. Very needed closet. <laughs> Very needed. Yeah, well, yes. you didn't have any, right? Didn't oh, have yes. one upstairs. I didn't have any, so yeah, thank you so much. It's just a basement. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. It's just a carpet on the stairs. Oh, oh my God. God. Now, this is honestly Damon's fault. <laughs> wow. Because I said to Damon, don't finish the basement, don't finish the basement. We got a lot of work to do. And uh, we did all the work, and he finished the basement. No worries. I'm going to have to actually give all the credit to my guys. I mean, I did cheat a little bit and pushed him a little too far, and he said, do what you want. So this was completely gutted, completely. There was nothing left in here. We took everything out and redid it all. We started the walls, ran the electrical, spray foam on all your walls. You're not going to believe how warm this room is going to be in the winter. You will not believe it. You remember when I first brought you in, the geothermal went out the wall right here. It was six inches beneath the, the earth, right? Yeah. It now goes out the wall down here. So it's, it's the way it's supposed to be because we brought in all the right people. With the design, we make sure we do proper bulkheads, nice and high, covering everything in just perfectly. Works out nice, you know, lights throughout, they're all match, everything's nice and neat, and everything about this is the right way. Every single product is mold resistant that we use, the drywall, the carpet, everything we use. I'm happy. So told, are we, come on. <laughs> I told you we were gonna lose your bathroom and you're gonna lose your kitchen. <laughs> Right? So uh, you lost your kitchen. That's the most beautiful part of my house now. Ah. This is? Yes, so you it is. downstairs and rent out upstairs. So I you won't. have some work to do, my friend. <laughs> I'm kidding. We took out your kitchen, but we did give you a bathroom. So let's look at the bathroom. 
No. You go ahead. You just walk around. Is that a bad We'll follow kid? now. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Beautiful glass shower stall. Uh -huh. New toilet, new everything. Wow. Nicer bathroom all around. No, happy? but oh, happy. more than happy. happy. Come on, it's like it's an enormous job, and we never expected such a beautiful things. This is enormous. We were hoping seriously that perhaps we will get a little bit of patch in here and there, perhaps a little bit of shine to it, but we never ever expected that we will get a diamond. Nobody yeah. can do this, but you people. Come on in to you see your new me. utility room. So go ahead. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. We want to make the utility room exactly what that means. That's going to be our laundry room. That's going to be our furnace. Our electrical panel in the corner, which was completely redone. I love Frank and his boys to all the work they've done. We took out of the crawl space that unit that was there. We put in state of the art. This is a beautiful system. And you can see how professionally it's installed. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, it's a great idea on. that everything was moved from the uh, crawl space and put here. I think it's, uh, yeah. it's a much easier access and. Uh, yeah. And very and, easy to use yes. as well, yes. by the way. Mm -hmm. What I love about this system is that we are taking Earth's natural temperature and we're raising it by a couple of degrees, putting it throughout your house, so it doesn't cost a lot to do it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, as we're heating to 140, we'll put it into a holding tank. Now, this holding tank, instead of wasting it, because we are cycling, think about how that water mm -hmm. goes, this now assists your hot water tank. This is one enormous thing. Those people will never fail in any corner. <laughs> it's no matter what they promise to do, uh, they will always deliver. And that's what they say, you are the most lucky people because that's my Holmes with his team fixing the house. And this is things that no money can buy. Are you happy? Yes, yes, yes I'm more than happy, come on. It's then I'm like, happy, yes. and I think we did our job right. Thank you very much, my yeah. thank you. How a person can say thank you yeah, for this job that you did and the, the most beautiful present we ever got. It's thank you, it's not enough, but... Oh, you don't <laughs> have to hug me. You can hear, you can hug me. <laughs> <laughs> they left here the, some parts of their lives. They worked very hard mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I think it's important. It's quite possible that all of us will stay in the basement now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. I think I'm going to like this. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, once again. You are so welcome. Did you make this by chance? Oh, yeah, you bet. <laughs> I think it's also my, my, my son is speechless completely. <laughs> I guess this would be a good time to tell my parents that I'm moving out of the top floor. <laughs>